What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at Last Haven, which is saying, up on their recent updates, it's saying, it says right there on the Steam page that they have released some of their biggest content updates ever. And so we're going to dive back on in. We've covered the game a couple times in the past as it's gone from relative simplicity and added more mechanics, and today will be no different. I've gone ahead and I've played for about an hour and a half to two hours to get us to a point that you haven't seen in the game yet because my last two videos I went straight from the start and so this time I kind of just played the game and let it run so that we're a little bit further on in. If you wanted to check the game out it's available down below in the description and early access and on top of that you can also find that was an odd pause huh? that was a little bit of an awkward pause. I'm a little bit hungry right now I'm not exactly sure how this video is gonna go dude I need like some Welch's I need like some Welch's like snackies or something dude that's what I should have done before this that's what a smart broadcaster would have done did but I didn't done did it, so now I gotta live with the consequences. Anyways, if you look down below in the description, there will also be a link to my Twitch stream and my Discord, just in case you wanted to hang out live. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive on in. Okay, so here we are. This is my village. I'll go ahead and give you a little bit of a tour because I'm pretty much just waiting on research anyways right now. Uh, inside my village, we've got our warehouse. This is the central repository for all your stuff. It's probably the first building you're going to build. We've got a sawmill. It traps, tra chops down trees, which is pretty cool. Apparently, though, if you load your game, it gets rid of the trees that you're prioritizing. Trees in this game, shockingly sturdy. They take forever to chop down. It has been one of my main things with this game that I'm like, damn... Why does it take so long to chop down trees? I need more space so that I can build, but it takes forever to chop down trees in this game. We've got a resource station. These guys are just cruising around, kind of like scavenging. They'll pick up stuff off the ground. They'll loot from houses. They'll pick berry bushes. They'll pretty much go out and harvest anything that you tell them to harvest that's inside the radius. We also have a set of greenhouses down here. That's where we're growing our food at, which is going into our central repository up here in the toolbar. On top of that, we've got houses. This is where the vast majority of our people are going to go to warm up and kind of feel better in the middle of the winter. The game does have differentiated seasons, so you're going to go from spring to summer to fall to winter, all that kind of stuff. And the weather is going to change, and you're going to have to be ready for those weather changes. We have a science center over here. That's where our research is getting done. The game has a tech tree that is quite large. I haven't actually gotten that far down into it. Apparently, there's also a gunfight going off right now. I don't know who's shooting. Somebody's shooting at something, but I don't know what's getting shot at. I've got patrols all over the place. The game effectively is kind of like RimWorld had a zombie apocalypse baby with something like an RTS. Like you can command your soldiers to run around and do their thing in RTS format, but everybody else is going to do colony survival things like crafting and knocking down walls and harvesting buildings and things of that nature. Aside from that, we've got our research going. I've got a stone crusher over here. They are gathering stone from this building over on this side and then have having it transported to the warehouse so that we can build more walls. I started a little corner right here, but then I came to realize that there's trees in the way, like everywhere that I want to build a wall. And so unfortunately the plan didn't work out so great. And so now we're just on like this great lumberjacking adventure until we get further on into the game. I've also got some pillboxes that have been set up in various corners of my camp uh, that are prepping themselves to fight with any kind of, oh yeah, it looks like they're fighting zombie boars down here. The interesting thing about this game is that every single one of your soldiers has a loadout that you can customize. Uh, so this guy's got a Glock right now, but if you take a look at this guy right here, he's got body armor and he's got an MP7. And so anyways, everybody's got customizable loadouts that they can play around with. Don't mind the medical markers that are up above all my soldiers. They've been in a couple of gunfights with like neighboring towns that keep sending raiding parties out to come steal our stuff. And they've all been kind of like grazed with a couple of shots. You can also do some interesting things that I don't know exactly how it affects like the overall flow of a battle. Uh, every single one of your characters can go prone. They can throw grenades. They've got active abilities. Uh, they can crouch to get low. I don't know if that lowers the hit chance or whatever for the enemy that's trying to hit them. But I do do it, tee hee doo doo, every single time I get into a fight because it seems like one of those things that's going to be incredibly useful. And so anyways, right now what I'm currently working on is I'm trying to get our heating and I'm trying to get our situation kind of like sorted out so that we don't freeze in the winter time. Freezing in the winter time and having your toes fall off in like a blackened mass is something that I've really been trying to circumnavigate, but for right now... I'm trying to get that up and running so that I can produce my own coal. I've used up like 400 coal this winter already, which leads me to believe that's probably a priority I should get on top of. And so that's what we're headed towards right now. We've got an event that I've got to see to over here. Hopefully nobody's infected. 
Uh, let's see here. Our resident spoke about an abandoned fuel truck that is near the camp. It may have fuel. Uh, we'll ignore it for right now. I don't think we have to really worry about it at the moment. I don't think it's going to be one of those huge things that needs to happen right this second. How long do I have on my research? We've got six hours left until we've got the ability to produce our own coal by chewing into our wood supply. We've got 13 people right now that are unemployed. You may have noticed the big scary orange bar that's underneath everything that's happening in our colony right now called stability. I assume that the game ends when the stability gets low. I haven't gotten it low yet, but basically this is judging the general cohesiveness of your colony and how well things are going. And when it gets low, bad stuff happens. So things like adding refugees to the camp or immigrants to the camp will lower stability. Whereas having like events and things that happen inside the city that like use up resources to make people happy, they tend to increase the stability. It hasn't really been something that has dictated how I've played the game so far. Like it doesn't feel like it's going to be as consequential as like stability in something like, let's say, Frostpunk. Uh, for example, but it is a thing that I've been keeping an eye on just to see how it affects the game, but thus far, I haven't really seen anything crazy that's happened. Uh, our coal production is done right there, so we probably want to move on to something else. I was thinking a medical tent might be a really, really good idea. Either that or the ability to produce our own ammo. How bad are we set up right here? So we're mostly using pistol ammo, and it seems like we've got 9,000 of it left, and I think I had like 12,000 like an hour and a half ago when I started the game off. So I don't think we really need ammo right now. Instead, what I would maybe lean into is let's get a field hospital so that I can heal up my guys. The other option is we are in the middle of winter right now, and we could raise our heating capacity in our houses by 10%. That might be pretty good to do as well. I don't know. It's either that or we can make our food more efficient, too, so that people get more bar from eating food. Let's go for the medical tent, because I feel like I have a lot of people who are wounded right now, and I feel like that'll help out. We'll put the game in speedy mode so that it rockets ahead, and maybe that gets done a little bit faster. And now that coal production is done, there's a couple of things that I can build. So I would think about the possibility of coal production, although I don't exactly know where I want to put a building like this. I would say maybe put it right here. Oh, can we not build on top of the tree stump? How do I de-stump this area? I would like to de-stump. That's a thing that I'm excited about. Uh, let's go ahead and if I wanted to select a resource, how come that one's not selecting right there? There we go. Perfect. Get that tree next. Uh, we're probably... I'm going to see what happens with coal production. I think we're going to need a lot of coal production to get on top of like the drain that we currently have. Which way does this face? There's the door right there. We'll go ahead and put it right there uh, for the moment. You should see a number of builders. They'll run over and help out with this construction. I may actually just get ahead of the curve and make two of them, and we can bulldoze it if it ends up being the case that we don't need two of them. Uh, but for right now, that should be fine for the moment. Let's go ahead and speed the game on back up and let our constructors do their thing. We're just waiting on research anyways. The game does have a world map. If you go to it, uh, you can actually raid other people's encampments, although I haven't seemed to unlock the building yet that allows me to do that. This is our camp on this side. And then all around us, there are other factions that have been raiding me and like attacking me lately. And so I don't feel too bad about going out and stealing their stuff. The map does change based on the weather and what season you're in. During the fall, everything's kind of like a red hue. During the spring or during like the summer, everything is a green. And so it gets snow in the wintertime. That's a really, really nice little effect right there. However, I haven't really gotten to that interactive point yet where we can attack other people's camps and steal their stuff. Uh, I could probably send some people out to scavenge while we wait. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's send some people out to see what they can find laying around. Just kind of in general areas here. Uh, because my patrols are doing a pretty good job at keeping the zombies out. Uh, there are lootables on the ground. If you hold down the tab key, you can see them. And I haven't actually finished looting this entire map yet. And so if there's like Berettas and things laying around, I'm okay with picking them up. Whatever area we are in, I'll tell you this. They have a ton of firearms. There's like an MP5 right there. Our soldiers should automatically re-equip items uh, as we find them on the map. And so we don't need to worry about micromanaging. Uh, most of the soldiers in your armies will naturally equip whatever the best thing is that you have in storage uh, without your prompting or anything else like that. You can hand tool each of your soldiers and effectively like give them a loadout of your choosing if you want to. 
but I haven't really had to. Uh, one point of interest with this game is that the sound design is very, very good. Uh, whatever audio they got for the game, like the gunshot sounds, they sound absolutely fantastic. You can hear the zipping and kind of like the pinging of bullets coming off of stuff, and the report of the firearm sounds really good as well. The soundtrack is really fantastic. It sounds great. It's very. It kind of reminds me of like the soundtrack you would get out of like a 90s action movie like The Mummy, like a summer blockbuster for the whole family, you know what I mean? And it sounds really, really good. I don't know who did it, but they did a good job. We've got a Geiger counter sound coming off right now. Uh, that's due to the fact that our millisieverts are very, very high due to the snowfall, unfortunately. And so that's one of those things that's... It hasn't affected anything yet, but I assume that if, like, the millisieverts get too high, we're going to have to do something to get around that. We've got guns, we've got ammo. Oh, good, our hospital research is done. Very nice. Uh, next up, we've got medicine. Provides access to the construction of field hospitals. Isn't that what we already just got? It doesn't function, though, if it's too cold. But we can put a heater in there to help out. Let's maybe drop one of these things over here. Because I feel like something like a hospital is going to be a really big deal. Uh, to a colony. Like, it's really going to help out with people's morale. Yeah, let's just snake it in right there. Does it open on both ends? No, nah, it just opens right there. Okay. Yeah, put it in right there. We've also got another event for 50 more seconds. Let's see what they've got for us. Uh, there is a big pile of scrap metal near our camp. I actually do need scrap metal, so I'll send three people out for the resources. We've got extra workers anyways, so I'm not really too concerned about getting them going. Now let's get back down to our little looter soldier down here. Maybe I'll go for politics one. Nah, let's go for heating efficiency. That sounds good. Heating efficiency feels like it's going to help out. We've got some polymers laying around right there. I don't know why in this divey hotel there's a bunch of just like loosely arrayed clumps of high-tech polymers laying around, but you know what? I've learned better in games than to question stuff like that. It just doesn't feel necessary. It's been a while since my last raid, so I've got like a sneaking suspicion we're going to get raided pretty soon. We've got an Uzi right there. We've got another MP7. Very nice. A little bit of fuel just to round out the stockpile inside this gas station. This neighborhood is notorious for its supply of high-tech MP7 firearms that they keep just on sale inside every single Valero station. If you see the dinosaur out front, that means there's guns available for purchase. No signature, no waiting period, just walk in and grab one with your Slurpee. Aw oh, yeah, brother. Aw oh, yeah. Now we got some ammo over here. I'll probably grab that. We got another stack of ammo right there. We've got a little bit of fuel. This place is getting fairly picked through, but I don't actually feel that bad about it. We'll send him back to camp. I already got all these buildings over here in kind of like that loose area. Uh, we'll put a guy right here. Our science center appears to no longer be working because it's too cold. That's a little bit of a bummer. I do think that's going to affect efficiency. Uh, we are producing mad coal right now. So let's go ahead and dismantle the building. I don't think we're going to need that much. Uh, 22 seems like a lot of... Well, that's a lot of coal. We had like a minus nine. And so I don't think I'm going to need that much. I was going to say, it should stay positive. And we've got people like, we got people running around. We got people getting healed over here. We'll go ahead and modernize that with the upgrade so that it can work down to minus 10 degrees. And then how long do we have on our heating upgrade? I think like best case scenario, that's only going to make it so that we can withstand like minus 15 degrees. But we are in like the depths of winter right now. And so it should get better from here, hopefully. The game doesn't supply you with anything like a calendar or like an almanac that tells you exactly where you're at in the flow of a year. I would like to have like a rotary wheel or something over here that basically goes around in circles and it's got like symbology on it for like whatever season it is uh, so that you can figure out like, okay, I'm almost there, you know. Uh, the game is missing little quality of life things like that. I assume they'll get implemented like later on down the line as the game moves towards its completion. But still, it's a something that I desire and it's not really in the game yet. Uh, who's getting gunned down over here? I hear many, many gunshots. 
At some point, what we'll try to do is run this fence all the way down so that it forces enemies into choke points in order to get after us. I may have to run the wall inside of that right there, or we may have to run it around this building, which would kind of suck and look a little bit janky, but... You know, sometimes makeshift areas where you live are a little bit janky. Uh, did I lose anybody? Why do I have two less workers right there? I don't know. Make sure we have all the workers working, though. As many workers as you can possibly have working, please. I'm going to try... Oh, an enemy squad is coming in 54 hours. It is a light enemy troop. Actually, no, this is the first attack on my base that is not a light enemy troop. It's actually like a full-on attack. Good. We'll, we'll get a little bit of that bucka bucka bang bang going on. We'll handle our gangster stuff. Another event over here waiting to be dealt with. Let's see if it's bad or if it's kind of like manageable. Uh, it looks like one of our residents wants to leave. I mean, it gives us stability if we let him go and we supply him with food and we'd be like, Farewell, my friend. I shall see you in the great air yonder. So, like, we'll give him some food and stuff and just kind of have him do his thing. Our food does seem kind of bad right now. If there's any mushrooms out in the woods... Oh, mushrooms don't grow in the winter. Uh, there's basically little food patches that you can send out soldiers to go gather mushrooms and things. And they will grab mushrooms and it gives you plus five to food. Yeah, we've got, like, pretty serious food drain going on right now. Okay, I could probably get down on a few more greenhouses. Yeah, let's uh, let's do it. Go greenhouse right there. And maybe like another greenhouse, like right next to it. I don't know if that's like recommended placement or a good idea, but I'm going to go ahead and do it because I think we're going to need it. Uh, they should run off and get that constructed. I don't actually know if we're going to have enough workers to make that function. I'm kind of running out of workers right now. Uh, heating one is done. Is that an upgrade that I have to apply, or is that just a thing that works? So temperature limit. Let me see if I can find anything more specific in the listing. I could get better houses. I don't think better houses are going to give us any more thermal insulation. I think the better houses are just a platform for getting to further upgrades. But we can check that from the construction menu. So house one is actually good down to minus 40. That's not bad. I could take that. It's 48 hours to get the next version of housing. So I think I'm going to do that. We do need to increase our stability. So I think at some point I'm going to have to do politics. Ah, uh, right there we can get into the world map. Okay, well that's fine. We'll just kind of keep the game running fast. And I think we still got time to hit like all of it. What's going on over here? Uh, it looks like the group returned from their mission, and we now have plus 50 metal. Very nice. Uh, they don't always succeed at their mission, in case you were wondering. Sometimes they come back, like, shot to pieces, and there's only, like, one of them left, and they're at low health. Uh, bad things can happen from time to time when they go out on expedition. I think the winter started on, like, day 15. So we probably have about eight days left to go, would be my guess. They lost a worker over there, so we'll go ahead and refill that. Any building that's designated in gold... Uh, it means that they don't have a worker for whatever reason. Yeah, I'm not going to have enough workers, actually, to get... Oh, that one's out of alignment, dude. Hold on. Go ahead and... I think that one's, like, slightly more forward than that one right there. Go ahead and disassemble it anyways. I was just trying to get a little bit of food to top us off. Mmm, top us. Anyways, what's happening down south? Something else? Uh, we have refugees... Yeah, they can come on in. I still need more people. Like, I'm always hurting for workers. And so, like, I keep taking more people. There doesn't seem to be... I'm assuming I need, like, a propaganda center or something in order to get, like, stability to slowly regenerate on its own. Uh, it doesn't seem like you get a bonus for holding off raids or, like, defending the colony or anything else like that. But, you know, it'd be a nice thought. God, you guys are just busting rounds over here, aren't you? Killing everything that moves. All right, so the greenhouse is up and running. And in fact, I didn't really need to disassemble that second greenhouse. I wasn't expecting that I was going to get more refugees coming on in. Huh. Sometimes there can be a big gap in between refugees. But I guess not. Oh, they tore down that fence right there. Kind of, I think. Maybe. 
No, never mind. I don't think they did. Well, they're still gathering things, so it'll probably be all right. There's little scrap piles all over the place. We got another event right before the enemy attack happens. So we'll take a look at that real quick, too, and just kind of see... Uh, one resident spoke of a pile of scrap metal a kilometer from the camp. Yeah, send them out again. Metal's one of the harder things to come by, and so if I can get more of it, it looks like the enemy is also here. We are about to be under attack. All of our wounded are healed, though, which is really good, which sort of limits the chances uh, that anybody's going to die in combat, I would think. They should. What it'll do is it'll drag pan the camera off to the side of the screen, and, like, bandits will show up and be like, We want your stuff! And then we'll be like, No! And then we'll, like, throw tomatoes and stuff at them. And then we will shake hands and resolve our grievances amicably, as tends to happen in the post-apocalypse, when groups of, you know, smelly men in body armor... Just got shot. There's blood. There's like more blood than fits inside of a human being right there. That worries me. Uh, house one is done, which is great. I don't know if I can upgrade houses or not, but we need to take politics next so that we can get the plus 10 to stability for our next batch of immigrants. And then let me take a look and do these individually upgrade to the next type of house? They don't. Okay, so things are going to get a little interesting over here, I think. What we will do is because there's so much forest around. What would be really cool as a feature is because there's a house right here. I've been hoping for the last couple patches they'll do something with this. It'd be really, really nice if you could treat these houses basically like capture the flag points. And you could send soldiers into it. And if you clicked on a little prompt, it would say that you're defending it now. And a little meter would fill up. And it would be constantly attacked by zombies the entire time that you're defending it, and once you complete it, this building becomes yours, and you could either use this plot right here to build one of the buildings of your own, or, like, residential buildings, industrial buildings, mercantile buildings could be converted into basically special buildings that reward you for taking the time to capture them. Uh, that would be, like, a really, really cool way to use some of these environmental buildings that are blocking off building spaces all over the map. I would like it a lot. We need polymers to build this. Oh, these houses aren't that big. These are like little houses right here. Okay. Yeah, I'll put one right there. That seems like an okay spot for it. Yeah, nestle it on in. I need better houses for the winter anyways. And I'm going to need like a little bit of leeway when it comes to my placement in order to get that done. And so what's going to happen is we, ha we don't have enough houses for everybody. So I need to build a house up here, demolish a house down here, replace it with the upgraded tier 2 building. Ideally, the way I would have liked to have seen it is that the lower tier houses can just be upgraded to the higher tier houses. Oh, these guys are just flatly attacking. They're not even asking for anything. Okay, and it looks like they're coming in from the bottom. Okay, so they're coming in from that road right there. I suppose it's going to kind of depend on the angle they hit us from. But we need to circle the wagons. I'm ready. And I need all of my crazed gunmen that are not actively, like, so I'll peel off. I still need guards on all the corners. Because one of the weird things about this game is that your workers that are unemployed, they just, like, wander around the map within, like, a certain radius of your base. And I've spent a bunch of time figuring out what that radius is. It seems to be about one block away. And so you need to put patrols on all the crossroads about a block away from your city. Otherwise, every now and again, your workers will be getting shaved off by zombies and, like, random enemies that are out here. And when they get shaved off, it just hurts your workforce. And I'd just rather not deal with it. For example, like, what did they shoot right there? Oh, they shot a zombie. Oh, they're coming in from a different angle than I thought. Okay, set up in the woods like an ambush then. This guy will help out. The game does have differentiated music for, like, all the different events. When you're being attacked by raiders, you get different music from when you're being attacked by, like, zombies and whatnot. Uh, there is a zombie horde event that you will have to deal with at one point or another. I'm going to have these guys get prone in the woods, like, get low, and just fight when and where you can. They're firing at civilians over there. I think some of the... Oh, they threw a grenade. Nice. This guy leveled up. There is veterancy in the game, by the way. The more combat you put your military in, uh, the more they're going to level up. You guys, get on your feet and move forward. Grenade right there. Did it just blow up that... Dude, it just blew up that, like, dick dick or whatever that is, dude. I don't even know what that was. 
Our pillbox is fending this guy off right here. It looks like they killed two civilians while advancing on my town. It's kind of a bummer. Not super crazy happy about it. Who got killed down here? I don't see a body. Did I lose a soldier? Oh, I did. I lost a soldier. Did he leave his equipment on the ground? So we've got rocks over here. All right. Everybody pick yourselves back up. I've got to put everybody back on, like, guard patrols, basically. We'll take one guy, and we'll scoop up all the remainders that are still laying around over here. So you guys go over there. He's still in an okay position. We've got this guy over here who still doesn't have a job. Okay. You go pick up the rocks. There we go. I could definitely use more stone right now. It looks like that guy dropped the Chiapa Rhino. Lots of the bad guys have Chiapa Rhinos in this game. But, like, in real life, Chiapa Rhinos are actually kind of like a weird, uncommon gun. Like, if I saw a Chiapa Rhino on sale at my local gun shot, they are rare enough to see that I would buy one on the spot. Instantly, I would be like, I will take it regardless of price. Like, just as just as a fan of the design of the firearm. If you don't know what the Chiapa Rhino is, it's a really, really unique Blade Runner-looking revolver. It's manufactured by Chiapa. And effectively, it's got a barrel on the bottom where the bullet comes out instead of on the top. And the top is weighted uh, so that it's basically a three fifty seven Magnum that is effectively recoil neutral. And they are very highly sought after, both for aesthetics and because... Uh, they are, like, just an interesting firearm, so collectors want them, everybody wants them. So they're kind of hard to come by. They don't show up very often. Uh, you come back and just kind of, like, I guess, stand guard somewhere. I don't care where you stand guard. Just stand guard around somewhere. And, like, I'm kind of fine with it. Uh, you guys stand guard over here. You guys can pop a squat and just kind of hang out. All right. So we survived one of our engagements with the enemy. That's good. And honestly, they didn't really make it to my pillboxes or anything either. I could probably get away with putting another pillbox right here facing outwards. I am going to have to deconstruct these and push them out, though, as we need more and more construction space. What's going on with my research? Ah, oh, my research popped mid-battle? Bro, that's such a bummer. We've got another event. What do they want? Oh, cool. They succeeded twice in a row, man. Normally, my luck is not this good. Uh, we still have homeless people, so we're going to have to get on top of that. I don't really want to disassemble these houses over here, but I think I'm going to have to. And so we're just going to go ahead and do that, and hopefully nobody has, like, frostbite peel off their toes. We do have another event that requires resolution while I was just waiting for research to pop. Let's see here. We have information about a weapon that was left in a gun shop. Let's equip and send an expedition there. Yeah, do it. Maybe they'll come back with something awesome like an M4 or something. I haven't really found any rifles or anything just yet. Uh, people are cold. If my workers would work faster, we would be in better shape here. Unfortunately, they're just kind of like lollygagging at the moment. We've got 21 hours left until we're able to attack neighboring villages. So hopefully that'll be rad when we get there, too. What could be better than being able to engage in the same villainy by which we are targeted? That's how the world works. What goes around comes around. When you're surrounded by bandits and brigands, you gotta do what you gotta do. There we go. Now we've got space for houses. Cool. So three more houses have been slotted into play. I have no idea who's shooting at what. Uh, apparently, there's a bunch of zombies coming through down here. Oh, wolves, actually. Huh. Never seen the wolves before. Cool, those are new. I've never seen the wolves before. I've seen, like, the zombie boars, and I've seen some of the other stuff, too, but haven't seen that. And these guys are all getting to work right here, putting up new housing. You love to see it. Now that we're done with our research for the exploration... I think, like, it's a good idea to get combat training so that I can actually bolster my army. Because we've got a 100-guy unit cap right now. And, like, I'd, I'd like to throw some of my free villagers, possibly at, you know, like, maybe get it up to, like, 15. Because I'd like to have two there, two there, two there. Two there and two there. So that's, like, 10 guys. And we're going to need at least 10 or 20 guys to raid a neighboring town. So actually, raids might be not be in our future right now. 
it's going to take a long time to get to the rating because I think the minimum amount of enemy soldiers that can actually be in an area are like 10. And you kind of want to have like double that just for attrition, like attritional purposes. What's going on down here? Is that the metal guys that are coming back? Did they get the gun? What kind of gun was it? Was it a cool... Oh, it was a P90. Bro. Oh, they got so many dope guns. They got a P90. They got a couple. They got an M16. They got an M4. They got a... I mean, the car 98 I'm not that excited about. That's kind of like a grandpa's gun. But it's still a nice bolt action in case we need a marksman, I guess. It just doesn't quite, you know... It's difficult to come by car 98s that have, like, weaver rails and stuff and picatinnies. And, like, we're in a post-apocalyptic situation where that kind of stuff can't be easily machined. And so, just kind of makes me think, you know, like, well, chances of having a marksman are pretty low. We've redone, like, our entire suburb over here. I need to continue tearing down shacks until we get further. But that being said, shacks a lot bigger than I am, so maybe don't tear him down. I just feel like he could put a, like, I feel like his foot's probably as big as my torso, so it might not work out so great for me. Uh, but anyways... This is the last haven. The game is continuing to update, is continuing to have things added to it. The game continues to just add new enemies and mechanics and things of that nature. It's developing very, very nicely. Uh, things I think they could add is getting some of these shacks and whatnot to have like the same floor blueprint as like the other houses so that you can just linearly upgrade them without having to move them around would be nice. Uh, I would also like a move option where you can actually click and move any building that you want to. That's one of my favorite features from like city builders that's been more and more common as time has gone along. Uh, I do think that adding a little bit more utility to the rating because the rating for right now you're just going to neighboring cities to steal their stuff. Uh, basically, everything will have, like, a resource that is associated with it. It would also be, like, crazy cool if there was, like, heroic locations that gave you technologies that would allow you to build special buildings that, like, really, really give your colony, like, a leg up and, like, initiate various quests to, like, find them. So you got to send out, like, a search party. Search party comes back and is like, hey, this base over here has access to the location for our military base. And then you go over there and do that. And then once you do that, there's another location that's not taken over by marauders. Instead, there's, like, an overrun, you know, spot that's got, like, thousands of zombies in it. You've got to take in, like, a 25-man team to knock off all the zombies and get to the objective and bring it back. And then once you bring it back, it gives you, like, an antenna that allows you to attract more immigrants or, like, a special, like, you know, super greenhouse that works better than a normal greenhouse that you can use as an upgrade on all your previously existing greenhouses in exchange for, like, a ray resource that you have to get from another chain of, like, randomly spawned quests and things of that nature. Oh, look, we're being attacked by Brayden Chavez. Interesting. Does Braden Chavez know we were just recently attacked? Or is he attacking? Oh, man. Braden Chavez is a douche. All right. Well, anyways, my name is Flattercat. Thank you for sifting through the pile with me to find what's worthwhile today. I'll be back tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. But up until then, it's been a pleasure to be your host and just kind of remind you of the fact that Last Haven exists and is acting as a, you know, kind of a middle point between something like Banished, Rimworld, and like Command and Conquer. And I think that's kind of a cool idea. I think that's interesting, and it's worth kind of like fluffing up a project like that. I will see you all next time. Thank you for spending your very limited luxury of time with me. I'll see you later. Bye, everybody. It's been nice.